Hello everybody and welcome to Programming with Ruby Episode 9 Flow Control. As always, this video is brought to you by madwithcode.com and presented by me, Tyler. So, so far every single uh, program I've showed you has been completely linear. There's no way to do something based on what the user inputs and thusly no way to make anything like a menu system. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do all that with uh, these statements right here, the if, else, unless, case, when, so on and so forth. I will also be demystifying the code blocks I've talked so much about, because I can't really figure out where else to fit these in my video series, so I'm putting them here, haha. -ha. Uh, and also beware, I'm covering a lot of material, so much material it took me uh, four printed pages to get it all out, which I will read from occasionally, but whatever. So if you need to pause every now and then, think about what I've told you, or maybe you write your own code to test it out yourself, you know, start writing your, your own cool programs, do that. It will help you learn and everything. So let's get started. As you can probably tell, the first item on our list is code blocks. So I've been telling you about these code blocks. I'll be like, here, look at this. This is a code block. Looks a little weird, but I'll explain it to you later. Now I'm explaining it to you. Hallelujah. All right. So, code blocks look a little something like this. And I'm not actually defining an array, but just pretend it is an array. Okay, so if we had, or actually, there's that form of a code block, and there's also this. Sorry, I really screwed that up. And both of these actually do the same thing. This is better for single line stuff that you can actually span it across multiple lines, but it looks kind of bad. And this is generally more for multiple lines. All right. And they both do the same thing. And so to kind of explain this to you, on my array dot each, this is this method iterates over each element in the array, and I'm calling it item in this case. And what's been between the pipe characters, which is just above the enter key if you're interested, is the variable you're going to use because each gives you, you know, those methods give you that variable and that's how you mess with it. Okay. Now the rest of the block is just normal Ruby code and end. And this takes the place of the do and that takes the place of the end uh, for those squiggly brackets. So yeah. Now that actually didn't take that long, and let's go to if, else, and unless. So a basic if statement would look something like this, and this time we're not actually pretending there's a variable, we are using a real variable. If x was less than 5, just, oh wow, do something. Alright, and this is a conditional statement, the x less than 5, and just if kind of obvious your code goes between here and there's your end statement so if x is less than five then this code will execute now there are many different conditional operators you can do, use such as equals and even though that's a double equal sign that's how you do it because a single equal sign is an assignment like x equals three but comparing to see if something is equal to something else is used uses double equal signs there's less than greater than give me a second I'm so sorry less than or equal to greater than or equal to and not equal so and those are pretty self-explanatory so yeah now if you would like code that would run if the condition is false so if we have x equals 3 and we have if x is less than 5 which it is but hey yeah, do something if it's true you be and sorry else and do something if it's false yay again pretty self-explanatory now if you'd like to chain together if things so if it would be like if so if x is less than five but if it happens to not be less than 5, we can do ELS, which is shorthand for else. Say x is greater, or x is equal to 6, 
then we'll do something if that's true. And we can end that. And you can also chain these together indefinitely, so we could, um, almost indefinitely. So we could have another else if, and la-da, and another else, else if, and then an else, and then an end. And you can do that for as long as you want. Pretty cool. Alright. Now, you can also have two different conditions, or actually as many different conditions as you would like. So if we define a variable and we're calling it y. So if x is less than 5 and y is equal to 1, then we'll do something over here. Right there. Whatever code you want to put in there. Or we can have or if x is less than 5 or y, y is equal to 1. So if either of those conditions are true, then it executes the code instead of and where both of them have to be true. Okay. There's also the evil brother of if unless. So x equals to 3. This code will not execute. Will not execute. Because x equals 3. That's what unless means. Yippee. Really simple. Okay, now case and win statements. It's basically a different way of doing, it looks a little nicer in some cases, of doing a whole bunch of if-elses. So we're going to have x equals to 3 again. I'm going to do case x. Case x. And then win 1. So win x is equal to 1, then we'll do something. And then when it's 2, yada yada yada. <laughs> when it's 2, do something. And then, or like the else and if statements, we have else in here. And then do something if none are true. Alright. Now, you can't do any really complex conditionals, which sucks a little bit, but hey. Um. Alright, and that's how simple case statements are. And now, I'm going to do while, until, and for loops. Now, similarly to the above if statements, uh, while loops also take a condition. So if we have x equals 1, and then we have while x is less than 5, and then x plus equals 1, and put this x, and then end. And if you'll just give me a second, I'll run that code. And there we go, we have the running code. It prints out 2, 3, 4, 5, and then stops because x is no longer less than 5. Pretty simple. Alright. Now we also have, similarly to the relationship between if and unless, while has an evil sister called until. So, say maybe until x is equal to 3. And we'll do that, and we'll run that, and let me pop that up, and there we go, just two, three. And that'll do until, and until it's equal to that, instead of while it's less than something, yeah, pretty simple. Okay, for loops. Um, I'm going to have an array called foods, and in it there's going to be ham, I'm going to have some eggs, I'm going to have some cheese as well. All very yummy foods. And so for food in foods, and we'll do put us food plus is yummy. Because they are, they're very yummy. And if we run that again, sorry, I didn't, that didn't save. We go ham is yummy, eggs is yummy, cheese is yummy, yippee. And all very nice and exciting and of course this is the variable that it gives us and that's the variable that we're operating on and now there's also a for loops evil stepchild each which I should